Hello, Photolab 3 was released and I would like to show you a quick review of the new features in this new version. So the first change is they added keywords and you can add field of author and copyright. Since I'm a Windows user, uh, the, the keywords is not available yet. It will be available, I believe, in the next update. So I can't show you how to add a new keyword or how to edit a keyword. But nevertheless, if there was a keyword in the photo from another software, uh, here I have added a tag or a keyword in Picasa to this photo, you can see those uh, keywords and I believe that you can search by them. Uh, the author and the copyright uh, fields, you can fill them one by one or you can do a batch processing. I will select all the photos and I will add my name and my mail to these fields and now it's being implemented to all of the selected photos <clears throat> if I will go to another photo you can see I have my name and my mail in these fields so this was the feature of the keywords and those fields of author and copyright. Next thing, uh, first of all, we have in the workspace, we have what's a palette, which is called what's new in PL3. And we can see the main updates were on HSL, local adjustment and repair tool. If you don't like this palette, you can go to the workspace and select the DXO standard uh, palette uh, workspace and <clears throat> let's start with the local adjustment let's see the the, the update in this uh, tool uh, in order to start it let's just give it some uh, some edit first first editing I will change it to daylight and uh, I don't like the purple fringe okay let's leave it like this and let's give it some local adjustment now I will add a graduated filter and I will add here I will change some uh, control points just to show the the tool itself Let's add a new one. Okay, we can see that we have new, new, uh, new local adjustments. And if I will go to this local adjustment palette, I can see that I can have a list of of my my local masks and the first one was the graduated filter I can see it from here I can disable it or enable it I can invert it I will show it to you later and I can delete it if I want and a new feature too is the opacity I can change the opacity of this of this tool okay <clears throat> I can go one by one and make changes however I want and uh, I can delete this one and it's no, no longer uh, affecting the photo and from here you can control them one by one and you can see all of your local corrections. I, wanted, I want to show you the invert mask and for that let's go to this to this uh, photo here I can uh, I will go to the clear view clear view plus you can see the effect and let's say that this is the only change I want to do just to make it fast and easy here on the next photo I have my daughter in the photo and if I will do the clear view plus I will have a problem with her portrait because it affect the clear view plus is not 
uh, flattering to any portrait. So what I will do, I will take the local brush, auto brush, and I will select her with the auto brush. As you know, with the brush tool, there is the the inner the inner part which should be within the object that you want to select and the feathering area which is on the out, outline border of the object i'm doing i'm doing it quite quite fast okay so this is my selection but now i want to invert it i want that she will not be affected by the by the correction but uh, the area will be cor uh, the landscape will be corrected i can invert my selection now just for just to make it uh, very easy to understand i will reduce the the uh, exposure and you can see that she was remained the same and the landscape was reduced and you can see exactly how well does it work this auto brush now i want to add some clear view to the to the uh, landscape and by this way i have the effect on the i could invert my mask and i can have the effect on the landscape and not on the portrait itself i hope i Let's increase the exposure a little bit. Okay, so I hope that you understood how you can use this invert tool. Um, let's go to the HSL. If you want to go to the HSL, I will show you another photo. <coughs> this is a photo of uh, dry grass and we can go to the HSL and I can select this yellow, just let me stop the local adjustment. Okay, I can go to the yellow area. You can see here the color wheel of the XO and instead of explaining what is the inner part or the outer part, I will explain it a little bit later. Let's see how, what can we do. If I'm, if I'm reducing the luminance, it's exactly like we had. I can see that I've selected really the, this dry grass. I can change the luminance, the saturation and whatever. And double click will bring it to the uh, default value. And now I will show you, I can change colors. I will take this outside uh, handle and I will bring it to green. Okay, now we can see not all of the yellow grass got this effect so i will go a little bit to the orange and you can see the effect this is a very easy way to to see what is the effect of your change and to control it very precisely now the color now is very intense so let's reduce the luminance let's reduce maybe saturation and now we have a green grass quite easy Let's see, let's add some clear view plus and local graduated filter here. Okay, and we can see the before and after. Okay, you can see the before and after and what did I want to say? Okay, the inner part and the outer part. This range of colors in the inner, inner part will get 100% of the effect. The outer uh, or the external part of this selection, this range, will get a partially uh, effect. It's like a feathering, it goes from 100% to 0%. If I will reduce it, this area, just a minute, okay, you can see that some uh, area, some 
colors are not affected, but it, it was affected by the partial. And I can change it like that. And I can, con I can control exactly what, how would it look like, the photo itself. Okay, we saw the uh, HSL. There is also another slider, which is uniformity, which means how evenly or how uniform will be the change. I'm not sure, I don't really understand it exactly and I don't know where to use it. I can see the effect, but I'm not sure that I can explain exactly how to use it and when. So we will learn about it. And we saw the HSL, we saw the uh, local adjustment. Let's see the repair tool. The repair tool, we can select it. And now if I want to, uh, to eliminate this house, I can select it. And I can see that as a repair tool, it was, you see, it was uh, uh, vanished. Uh, you can see that we have here the fields that I can control the repair tool. I can control the opacity. So it will remain, uh, the effect will not be 100% and it will be uh, as, a, as a background. And <clears throat> so let's make the opacity 100%. And if I didn't like the effect of the sky, I can choose that it will take the control from another, way, uh, another place. But it's, uh, since we have the grass here, so we have to make it uh, okay. This one looks better. Uh, I can change the repair tool. Now it became to a clone, you see? Once I've touched this one, this, let's make it again. It's a repair tool and this was the field that I wanted to show you, but it was changed by itself. Here we are in the repair tool. I'm selecting this structure and it's being uh, eliminated or vanished. And if I think that the area is not the right way, the selection is not the right selection, I can go to clone and let's again select this area. Now, the problem is that I cannot see the effect immediately. But let's say that this is my selection. Maybe I can change some other things. So on the repair tool, what we can see that we have the opacity. We have feathering also if we want to change it. And we can change it from repair tool into clone. And I can clone whatever I want. Uh, that's it. This was a quick review of the new features in DxO Photolab 3. Thank you very much for listening.